Hey guys, Philip Passmore here with another video on Star Maid. This time, however, I'm going to look at manufacturing again. And I gave a very brief sort of introduction. I say brief, and it took about 20 minutes, but still. I gave a brief explanation of how you make the basic blocks and then how you craft. And I mean, it is quite confusing starting this out. This is all the um, different uh, schema dines, I believe they're called. Um, now, yes, okay, I'm gonna get this out of the way now. Um, these look, let's see, if I remove it, it'd be easy to see if I do this. Okay, that's for 10,000, that's for 30,000, and that's for 20,000. The ten and thirty thousand look identical. The twenty thousand look like factory enhancer units. Look, I, and I get this game's an alpha. I am really hoping the artwork changes on some of this, but at first glance, I can't tell what these are. <laughs> it really annoys me. I, I really wish it didn't annoy me so much, but it does. It does. Uh, mainly because I've loaded up the wrong ores into the wrong ones before because it's hard to tell. I mean, I had a gripe with um, these being simply different colours. But, okay. Well, with that little wine out of the way, let's dive in. I wanted to make a system, because if you've watched my first video, Introduction to Manufacturing, whatever I called it, um, you will see that this is a surprisingly complex system and a complete pain in the head. Uh, pain in the head? Pain in the neck? Let's go pain in the neck. So this is, simply put, this is a dump and forget system. And there is one factory input connected to six mineral separators, connected to 12, uh, what are they called, particle presses. And then the particle presses are then connected to the schemadines. And yeah, it, it's, what I said basically it is a f just load up and forget system uh, items then get transported through like salvage cannons there is a couple of minor issues with the system it's far from perfect but I'm pretty sure this seems to be hoarding components in places but again I mean I don't really care this is this is my way of making this process more straightforward for myself more than anything because I, I just want a system where I can load up and forget. Uh, I have found a slight solution for, for hoarding of ores uh, which seems to happen and that isn't actually that bad to deal with and when I say that it really isn't that difficult. Um, the, if you're getting ores through to the end process and uh, because there's some you know, some recipes do call, well, do call for raw. You know, it's not something you can, it's not something easy to fix in that respect. However, what you can do is if you take the ore out, and I think um, plexium is the ore which has caused me, f which is for one, yeah. So plexitanium has caused me problems in that regard. But if you just take that out and you dump it into a particle presser, you can then feed the components in directly. In fact, if um, if and hopefully when uh, limits on how much you can hold, I mean I'm holding twelve thousand red rock on me. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping stack limits are eventually introduced, and and off they all, that all goes. But for all that comes through the system, in fact, what you could probably do is process all the ore separately. I mean, it all goes to the end process anyway. It kind of depends on... I mean, I this has been working for me quite well. And, I mean, we've got salvage cannons. We have Plex Recycler. I, I still have no idea how to use that. And uh, that's got nothing, unfortunately. I mean, I haven't put in all the ores, and some of the ores I have far more than I probably should. 
See, this one's, oh, this one's quite nice. Radar Jammer and OC Cloaker. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get either of those to actually properly work as they no, intended. I don't think this works brilliantly, but this is designed in mind for when you're playing in a group. And, I mean, this crafting system's complex enough to really put people off. And I'm, I'm quite enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. I like this crafting system. However... I will, and I, f I well, I do understand, and I will respect anyone who says, "Screw this, it's too complex," because it is. Um, wrapping your head around this isn't exactly easy. And what the reason why I built this system is because there's no signpost system in the game yet, at least not that I'm aware. And if anyone does tell me there's a plex sign, that all I have to do is craft one. I would be grateful, <laughs> to be honest, um, because it is so frustrating currently. Um, so this is really just to make things simple. As people get ore over time, they can just dump it in. And the random items you don't want. I mean, what is this making in vast quantities? Well, I don't use the D1000 missile array. That's dumb fire. And turret docking units. That's an awful lot of turret docking units. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, way too many than I would possibly ever need. Hmm. But that said, it isn't really too bad. In fact, what you could do to make this even more really efficient is um, if you remove the extra components knocking around which don't seem to be being used by the factory unit themselves and just shove it all back into the um so yeah if you just shove it all back in then they will go to the factory units which will use them directly and it gets spread more evenly because i think there's some sort of bias going on in the system currently where certain versions are getting well certain Certain ones seem to be getting certain ore, and I don't know why that's all bias is going on. But you know, th this is more a temporary fix until the system becomes a little bit more user friendly. And I thought you guys would appreciate um, that this is quite easy to make. Actually, I'm going to show you now. Um, I'll do it here. You know, I don't need to be complex. Um, the reason I split this in half, um, this is the 1000, 2000 and 3000 model. And this is the 10,000, 20,000 30,000 model. And they all use, each block uses all the ore types. Uh, it just seems to make more sense than having them all fight from the same, <laughs> from the same particle presses. Uh, in fact, I probably should have divided it again. No, actually no. No, that, I think it's okay the way it is. Now, by having them all sort of take from the, it's all thing is, if a ore was to go through which wasn't used by any of the um, skimmer dime units which it was attached to, this would hoard components, and I don't want that. I want all components to at least end up on this side, preferably as ship parts. <laughs> but if not ship parts, then at least components. So. I mean, I'm just going to show you how to build this because this is really simple and if you just wanted something nice and straightforward, then this is the way to do it. And I mean, I can give the recipes for the um, Skymodyme units, 3,000, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 if you really want me to. It's not that hard to make. You just need some more. And if, yeah, Orm and Bobby AI units, they, they really are. <laughs> they really are handy. Uh, let me check. Yeah, I'm building factory inputs. <sighs> oh well. Okay. Now you connect up like you would normally. And then you get the particle presses. Oh, I will say one thing. You may notice there's currently black wires kind of hanging around on this side. I was trying to do a whole plating sort of mass production idea I was trying to just break it down and 
tried to stop it producing, I think it's the SD2000 flux coils. Uh, and instead make whole plating of rock. And it partially was successful, but not enough really to share. Uh, I'm going to keep working on that and see if I can come up with something. But these black wires will disappear. Because if you were made to make a mistake when connecting this up, these black wires will disappear when you reload the game. Um, okay, so we have here... Okay, let's go on to the other side. I think this will make more sense. Okay, now you connect up, but make sure you connect two particle presses to each uh, mineral separator. Okay, now that's done. I don't have spare units on me. So let's say the green is, I don't know, for 1000 variety. Well, I won't mix and match this time. Okay, for some reason I came up with the idea of just doing that and I kind of regret it because it doesn't look good but I I might change it maybe okay so that's a 1000, 2000, 3000 model I mean on the plus side using this sort of um, <laughs> using this also makes it a little bit more visually distinctive than the normal room okay and what you do is you connect up like you did before but you connect that to the three particle presses on the bottom and all three of the scamodynes on the bottom need to be connected to the bottom three particle presses and then do the same for the top for the top and that's it um that that really is it that is you can then dump everything into here well of course if you were doing this if you build rebuilding the entire thing because i mean this will only give you the items from 1000 2000 and 3000 models but if you want all six different types, then you need to do something like put that there and then connect up like so and then and then build on the other side uh, and then connect up and then just instead of uh, 1000, 2000, 3000 you have the 10,000, 20,000 and 30,000 it's nice and simple honestly and I mean I went through this looking up which sorts is used by which and without having a signpost system I really don't think I'm going to use this to a full potential um, because I just can't remember what goes where <laughs> I don't want to look at my spreadsheet every time I want to craft an item to be honest um, I quite like just being able to dump in ores and every so often come and collect ship parts or or components, you know. I mean both is good, then empty in them all, go back round to the input and if there's ore, shove it into because what you can do of course is I don't know if I break this pick up the pieces and because what I can do is have a platform off on the side here and I'll put down an input here but you know it basically does you know it, it, it's just multiple presses all connect all connected to the same input block which means everything will get easily and quickly actually what I could do is put it over here have a corridor going in this direction and then have these easily accessible on the wall and I can double them up so yeah then you can just empty them of components after the ores finish processing if you really wanted to you can process all the ore first and I mean that's up to you and there is some advantages to that uh, particularly if um, stack limits get put in you may want a processing center before worrying too much about dumping everything into the input now there is one last thing that really needs to be covered when we're doing this. Okay. Uh, please don't crash, please don't crash. Okay. <laughs> oh, I had a horrible feeling it was going to crash then. And I seem to be okay. Now. The only issue if you're going to copy this design, the only thing I need to warn you 
is its power requirements are extremely high. Um, I believe, yeah, you can see the power. If you look on, if you look on my screen, you can see the power gets drained by about about fifteen thousand currently. When they're all processing and all is being processed, I found it uses about thirty thousand every five seconds. Which isn't a problem because my recharge rate is pretty high. But it does mean you have to actually make use of these power tanks. Now, the power tanks I kind of thought were glitched at one point because they seem to have such little impact. But what you need to do is they need to be connected together. And when they're connected together, they have a larger increase. And the more of them you have, the larger increase. Because I thought they were glitched because they only seem to give like one or two extra capacity mm, sorry one or two extra capacity and I've had to put about 200 on and I've managed to increase capacity by about 13,000 it's enough to keep these factories going and I really need to increase it as well mainly because well with time to draw power for weapons, I mean, if a place has to defend itself, it would pretty much drain its power pretty damn quickly if the factory units were running. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, just make sure you've got enough power generators and you make sure you have the um, power tanks uh, set up to give you a nice boost. So I thought I'd share that with you guys and I hope if you do use the design it works for you and if there's any problems you know send me a comment and I'll, I'll try and reply but uh, you know it, it's easy enough to build and it's actually a really simple system and I personally think it's great for groups because communicating what goes where <laughs> with people is just going to be a pain particularly when there's several ores very similarly named um, plus with <laughs> this kind of dime units all look so damn similar I I really hope they get a um, I, I still can't get past without the 10,000 and 30,000 look like um, <laughs> the presses oh god yeah oh well it doesn't matter thanks for watching guys um, if you like the video hit like and yeah, subscribe to the channel for more videos and you know all that lovely stuff and I hope this has some helped you and if you have any issues with following the sort of instructions on how to build it I'll do a I'll try doing a written version and uh, I may I could always do a diagram I suppose it should be simple enough and if it isn't say and I will try and make it as clear as possible I might even do a follow-up video if it really comes to that um, but thanks for watching guys